Our budget E36 rally car has come a relatively long way in a relatively short period of time. It's a fun, durable, reliable car that we can beat up off-road and it seems to enjoy it. The problem is it doesn't sound anywhere near as fun as it is. So today, I think it's time to change that. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit. Let's make a little noise! Big ol' thanks to eBay Motors for sponsoring today's video. What's that, you really think I'm gonna tell you how trustworthy eBay Motors is? You really think I'm gonna say how they make it easy to buy and sell cars and parts in a secure online shopping environment? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, as if. As if I'm gonna stand here and tell you that they have a vehicle protection program on cars that are purchased that are less than 10 years old. As if I'm gonna tell you that that guarantees that the car that you bought is the exact one that you're getting. Like, like, I'm really gonna stand here and tell you all that. No way, not happening. Next thing you know, you're gonna expect me to tell you to go shop with confidence by hitting the link in the description below. It's not happening, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna tell you. So let's just get back to Money Pit, okay? So yeah, we're gonna be putting an exhaust on the E36 today. Now, of course, I could just go buy an off-the-shelf exhaust, but that just seems too easy. And of course, We've already installed just an exhaust on the Miata. Get out of here! So today, we gotta step it up a notch. So, I'm gonna try to make my own exhaust for the E36, and I think it's gonna be pretty tricky, but before we get into all that, we gotta take the stock exhaust off and look at the thing that we're trying to replicate. Here she is, the stock cat back from our E36. And by golly, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this thing. The only problem I have with it is that it makes things a little bit too quiet. I'm gonna try to replicate this thing with some materials that I've purchased so that it'll basically do the same job, but do it just a little bit louder. So without any further ado, let's go look at all the materials I bought and what we have to try to replicate this. All right. Here's what we got. We got a Borla muffler, a Pro XS muffler with dual two and a quarter inch inlet and outlet. Two and a quarter inch stainless steel. This is a 304 class stainless steel tubing. And of course we got a couple exhaust tips. These were 50 bucks. This was 140 and these were 50 bucks a piece. With odds and ends, there's probably another 30 to $40 in exhaust clamps and reducers. So let's call it 350 bucks. Now, that's all predicated on having access to a welder, which I do have. So, it's a big reason that I'm doing this. I mean, I spent the money on a welder, so I might as well try to save money on projects like making an exhaust. That's kind of why we're doing this. I think that this is a really good project to hone a skill with. Shut the hell up! Try to weld over here! All right, so now that we know what materials we have, let's take a look at the tools we're gonna use and how the heck to use them. Here's our welder. I love this thing. I bought it because it does everything. It does MIG welding and TIG welding. What we're gonna be doing today is DC TIG welding, direct current for our stainless steel. First off, to control your arc, you've got your TIG torch. This is the TIG torch. This is a pretty nice one. It's got a bendable head, which is very handy for getting in certain spots. And sticking out of the front of it is our electrode. This is made mostly out of tungsten. So this is our tungsten electrode, and the, this is what the electricity travels through, and eventually it makes an arc between the tip of the tungsten and your workpiece, whatever you're welding. So having this clean and uh, sharp is very important, and then from there, our right hand is managing our torch distance and our angle and moving along, and our left hand is responsible for adding the filler material into that weld as we move along. And then you also gotta use your right foot. It's like we're drumming. I wonder if drummers are inherently better TIG welders because they're kind of already doing. See? Basically, when you crank this thing full down, you'll be using as much amperage as you've got set on your machine. So there's a lot going on here. It's really not super easy. But as long as you start to understand what each thing is responsible for doing, I think we'll be able to get some decent welds hopefully by the end of the day. All right, so I've got my practice pieces cut, and uh, now I'm about ready to weld them, but really important thing to get in a good weld, no matter what kind of welding you're doing, 
is to clean whatever you're welding really well. So I'm gonna hose this down with brake cleaner, then I'm gonna hit it on the belt sander, and then we'll clean it up one last time. Okay, so I'm about ready to tack this thing up. I've got one side held by my little pointy thing, and then the other side I'm just gonna hold by hand. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the arc, uh, say on this right piece, and I'll kind of walk it back and forth as I plow pedal into it. So I'm gonna start out, basically pedal all the way down, and uh, this should be really quick. And I'll start on one side, move to the other side, and probably back and forth a couple times very slightly just to get the two sides to melt and melt together. And there we've got a nice little tack. Took no time at all. Just a quick start the arc and then cross the bridge and we're tacked up. So now I can rotate this thing, get it tacked all the way around, and then we can really go to town with some welding and filler rod. I'm basically gonna be working like this. I'll start a puddle just like I did that tack, maybe get a little bit bigger, and then dab my filler rod and move right along. Puddle, dab, puddle, dab, puddle, dab, and ideally you wanna move as fast as you can with as much heat as possible. What you're supposed to do if you're welding something hollow, like tubing, like an exhaust, uh, and you really want good welds, is to back purge. So basically you'll cap off the ends of whatever you're welding with rubber plugs, and then you'll run a line of gas from a separate tank of gas inside of the tubing so that everything in here is filled with argon. And that'll make your welds really nice. Uh, and you know what, I should have those and, and I'll get them someday, but today I don't have them. And for this exhaust, I think that's just gonna be fine. The insides may look a little gross. Don't look at the insides. Cue the practice montage, baby. Yeah, this is where I get my six pack abs in the movie. Well, practice complete. I got two pieces of metal stuck together. Are these welds great? No. Overall, not a fantastic weld, but that is two pieces of metal stuck together and those welds will be good enough to make an exhaust. And hopefully by the end of the exhaust, my welds will look noticeably better. So now it's time to actually go to the car and start wrapping my head around what we're gonna do here. Well, by golly, I think we're gonna go with straight pipes. Not only is this muffler definitely on the limit of how big it could possibly be and still sort of fit in here, without having the bend that the factory muffler has, I can't get both ends to go where I want them to go. Uh, so we're just gonna go with straight pipes. And I think that's fine. It's a race car, it'll sound cool. All right, we've reached the point of no return. Uh, I'm gonna cut up our stock exhaust so that I can reuse these flanges. Then I will weld onto this end my own new tubing. So without further ado, let's make a little cut or two. Ready? square them up on the sander, and then these are ready to get welded to. So this will bolt up to the car as it did originally, and it used to have a muffler hanging off this back end, but we cut that off. So then it'll go to this to adapt up to my new two and a quarter pipe, and then straight pipe all the way back with this stuff, all the way to the tips. So we gotta get this on here, to make that adaption, then we can stick these back in the car and determine what we need to do next with our two and a quarter. We're off to the races. Okay, so now the moment of truth is upon us. I have to weld this to that with this and this and my foot. But we practiced once. Let's just go ahead and keep our expectations very low. Well, by golly, we did some TIG welding and it doesn't look that bad. I mean, I could stand to get better in a lot of areas, but 
It's better than I was expecting, and that is a win in my opinion. So now we gotta put these back on the car, make some decisions on how far we need to bring piping out, what kind of bends we're gonna need to make. And we're back, and we got a new shirt. New shirt alert. <laughs> That's stupid. You guys can't get enough of our catchphrase and we can't get enough designing clothes. That's why we came out with our third Give It The Bean shirt. This one's with a can. On the front, you got your Give It The Beans can. And on the rear, you got a gaggle of cans on the back in all different modern styles. That's a little art history joke for you. Very sleek, very street wear, very hip. Get your Give It The Bean can shirt on donutmedia.com. Only $29.98. Give it the beans and get one today. All right, so we need to go from here to back there. And it shouldn't be too hard. I do think I want to take a little angle off of these just to make sure we clear the uh, control arm. I've got my digital angle finder. we we'll call it eight degrees, I suppose. So I need to make a little eight degree turn here and I think it should be pretty easy. We'll make some cuts with the bandsaw, put some things together, and we should be able to make just a slight little turn here. Let's head over to the bandsaw. Okay, so we need to make an eight degree turn on our exhaust. I'm gonna make a four degree cut, and then I'll use the two pieces that I cut to make an eight degree turn. It might sound a little bit confusing, uh, but as we go, I think it'll make a lot of sense. So we've got our degree markers here. We want an eight degree turn, so I'm gonna make a four degree cut. Woo! Okay, so we've made a couple cuts to accomplish the eight degree bend that we needed. And like I was saying before, we were gonna cut that eight degrees in half and make a four degree cut in order to make our eight degree bend. So to show you what I meant by that, here's what we have. Uh, basically we had the square face here and then we made this four degree cut and then we made another square cut back here. So four degree cut, you know, as it was when we cut it, it's still straight. But when you rotate these 180 degrees to each other, those four degree cuts stack up and leave you with a total of eight degrees of bend. So we got four degrees here, four degrees here, total of eight degrees. So this will weld to our adapter on the car and then we can weld straight tubing off this as far as we can until we get to our next bend. I made two of them. I'm gonna tack these together and then uh, get them situated in the car, get them tacked in place and then we're really running. Okay, I'm just gonna draw a line from the bend with Sharpie onto the uh, part that's bolted to the car, just to mark you know, how I want it oriented once I get it off the car. All right, so we've got our adapters in place with our eight degree bends and things are looking pretty decent. So now I need to figure out how far I wanna take the next piece uh, until we're gonna get to our next bend. So I'm just kinda holding this up, eyeballing it. I got the tape measure out. And it looks like I'm gonna wanna come out probably to about here. And then we'll start turning up around the sway bar and kind of up into this pocket just a little bit. And then we can turn again and come straight out. About 13 inches. Oh yeah. All right, looks like the pieces I just cut are gonna work out. So now I'm gonna take these off, tack them in place, then probably put them back up and work on the next bend. And we are back. I broke the bandsaw blade last night. Stainless is kind of hard on blades. Uh, so I got a new one this morning and we're back in action. I needed two 30 degree bends, so I made them. I cut two seven and a half degree 
cuts and flip those around. So we've got 15 degrees here, 15 degrees here for a total of 30 and I did it twice. So now I need to go take these under the car, hold them in place, get them just how I want them and then mark that so I can take things out of the car and tack them together and get them welded up. Fact is there's just a lot of cutting, a lot of, a lot of time consuming parts, but honestly, I kind of enjoy it. Uh, if we didn't have to get an episode done, it would be even more fun because I could sit around in a shop and let a bandsaw run all day. Uh, I've been getting a lot of time on the TIG welder and I'm feeling pretty good with it. So let's get these put in place and move on. Like that. So next we do need two straights that are gonna come up here and then they'll turn. We'll make another bend here and then two more straights out the back. So what I need to figure out now is how long my next straights need to be. And I'm thinking about 16 inches. I'm gonna start by cutting the inside at 16 and hold that up, get a look at it, and then we'll cut the next one. Okay, now we need two 35-ish degree bends to turn the exhaust towards the exit of the bumper. We're getting close to the end. We've got most of the welding left, but only a few cuts left, and that's exciting. The most important part, we gotta make these somewhat pretty. And I think we'll be able to do it. I've gotten a few that I'm not altogether too unhappy with. Moment of truth. Well golly, that's an exhaust coming right out the back of the car. Now we just need to figure out how to hang it up. So I've made an exhaust hanger. This is gonna go right under here and it's gonna use the stock uh, exhaust hanger points. I'll bring the weld over here and weld this straight to the pipes. So two will become one. And then I'll probably add another piece of stainless just to join them together and make it strong. Well, hot dog, we got some straight pipes on an E36. It only took four full days, but I did it. I made it, and I would really like to hear it right now, but unfortunately, it's kind of late. We've got neighbors, so we're gonna wait until tomorrow. It is tomorrow, the car's still in the air, but it's time to fire this thing up for the first time and see what this thing sounds like. Hopefully it sounds good. It's gonna be loud, though. that it is maybe a little bit obnoxious, but it doesn't sound altogether too bad. It's definitely rowdy, which hell, for a race car, especially an off-road race car, I'm into it. Now the question is whether or not all this time and effort was worth saving four, five, six hundred bucks on an exhaust. I would say that it's worth it because to me this wasn't about the exhaust. To me this was about the skill that we learned making the exhaust. I think it was worth it. And I'm pretty pleased with how things turned out and I hope you guys had a good time watching. I hope you learned a thing or two about TIG welding, at least the basics. You know, we'll revisit it again in the future as we keep getting better and better at this stuff. Go follow me on Instagram at Zach Job and follow Donut at Donut Media while you're over there. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Ha 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 ha.